This time of day, everything's okay. I take a long look around. I have to say, this time of year, it becomes clear. Those you hold dear, you draw them near. This time of day, everything's okay. Hi, this is Willie Jones. And this is the first episode of Your Friends and Neighbors. And I'm very happy to say that my first guest is going to be uh, Eric Peterson, who is the producing artistic director. I always have trouble with that for some reason at Old Castle Theatre Company right here at Main Street in Bennington, Vermont. So welcome, Eric. How are you? I'm very well, Willie. It's, it's good to be here. Thank it's, you. It's really kind of funny to be, you know, doing an interview with Eric because I've known him for well since 1987, That's and a while. Uh, it is That's a long a time. It's kind of funny to to be talking like this. So I, you know, I want to think of it more as a conversation, anyways. But, um, That's pushing 30 years. Uh, it is. My, it is. Know. It is. And Whew. when I say um, friends, uh, Eric really, you know, friend Eric has been a friend. He's not exactly a neighbor, but Bennington Pownell were pretty close. Close. Well, and um, yeah, no, I've been involved with Eric and Old Castle for uh, since 1987. Uh, it's been a very enjoyable experience for me. Uh, Eric and everybody at the Old Castle family has always been just wonderful, uh, especially the last few years. They've been very understanding, and I thank them very much. Uh, and since this is a show that we're talking about your friends and neighbors, I would like to know a little bit more, or maybe I know. I don't know everything about Eric, but if Eric could just tell us a little bit about his life before Old Castle. That was a long, Yeah, long, I don't know, a long, long time, time ago. Time I mean, you're ago. a Benningtonian. I am. I grew up in Bennington. I went to New York to study. Uh, I studied at a number of places. I was at New York University. I was in the BA program at the New School for Social Research. Uh, I uh, finished at the... Uh, Conservatory of the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. I went to a broadcasting school, uh, did a theater around, and uh, we started Old Castle actually in New York and began to tour out of New York. I was a disc jockey for a while. I've been a newspaper columnist. Uh, I te I've taught at the high school level, the college level. Uh, I was the, um, what was it, my title? Director of Education and PR at the Park McCullough House about 137 years ago. Oh, I ago. guess I didn't know that one. Uh, so I've done, an, I've done a number of things, but for the last 43 years, I've concentrated primarily on Old Castle. Now, before we talk about Old Castle, though, what about your growing up here in Bennington? What do you remember the most about growing up? You had, what, two brothers? I have three brothers. Uh, three brothers. And you, you live now in the same house that your parents lived in. You and your I, parents, I live right? In the house, I live in the house I grew up in. And yes. you always say, my house is kind of small. It How is. How did four boys grow up in that small house? Well, uh, um, it was close. It was, it, was, uh, it was very tight, I guess. Uh, my older brother, Stephen, left for college the year that my youngest brother, Mark, started kindergarten. Oh. So for most of the growing up years, <laughs> there, there were three boys. Yeah, okay. In the house. Stephen would, of course, come back for, uh, for college uh, vacations and such. But most of, those, most of those years, there were three of us. We moved to that house when I was, I think, around three. I didn't know your father. I, I, I met your father briefly. I didn't know him very long. But your mother was a very sweet lady. She was. She was wonderful. I, had, I was blessed with fabulous parents. I, uh, fantastic. And, and with four boys, I mean, her life must have been pretty crazy there for a while. <laughs> Did it she bake? Busy. Did she make you she, make sure you boys were well fed and had baked. good? She baked. She was a wonderful cook. She worked every day. Uh, she worked at, uh, she was a banker. Yeah. And... Uh, very busy, and my dad was always very busy. Had two jobs, so it was. But well, we, had, we had great years growing you're up. You're used to having a lot of jobs then, because your parents yes. had different jobs. Yes. Okay, yes. all right. I guess. Um, yeah. When you, while you were in, in school, were you involved in theater? 
I was. You were in high school. Yeah. I played sports, and I was, uh, and I was involved in theater. No, <laughs> the drama club. Yeah, the drama yes. club. Now, what, <laughs> what did you do in sports? Because I know we were, we had a volleyball team that was not very good. Well, Old Castle Peter. We had it. We, we Old Castle. <laughs> we I, won our first. Old okay, Castle used to have a softball tournament. I, well, I know I wasn't never involved in that. Uh, we had a softball tournament for I think three years, and we would always field a team to play in the tournament, and we always uh, were eliminated uh, after our first game. In fact, in <laughs> softball, it was softball, and the, there is that rule that if you're a certain number of runs behind uh, in a certain inning, then the game is, is called, and we, I don't think we ever got past that inning. Uh, so we didn't, we didn't have the best team, I yeah, think that's safe yeah. to say. No, I played, uh, I played basketball. I, 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 my favorite thing about my, my illustrious athletic career, I went out for football as a freshman and as a sophomore, and I was in a cast before the first game each year. Oh, oh And geez. I would get the cast off in time I, for basketball <laughs> season, and my leg atrophied each year. <laughs> So I would begin each basketball season unable to bend my knee. Oh, jeez! So it was not an illustrious. Yeah, I had career. no. I didn't have. Yes. I didn't have an illustrious no, career. No. I. I tried. My parents wanted me to do uh, softball or baseball. I couldn't catch anything. Uh, basketball. I had my first basketball game. I got hit in the eye. <laughs> Had a black eye. I know I was not. Uh, I wasn't very good at sports. I played baseball. Slid into a home, and I think the first game, and was taken to hospital. So, <laughs> I had. Yeah. I, 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 I was. I think injury prone is probably the term uh, to use. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I at school when we when uh, we have the end of the year uh, uh, field day. Mm -hmm. uh, one year I was wearing. Uh, I I played the soft in the softball game, which was a mistake. But I was wearing these very loose pants, and I was running from second to third base, and here's all of these kids and teachers watching the game, and my pants went right down <laughs> around my knee, <laughs> knees. Now, so fortunately, I was wearing a long shirt, uh, and then, but I made it. I got to third grade, waddling down there, but then they got me out at home, and I was so upset. <laughs> I was not a happy camper. Um, so what did you do in theater? Did you uh, get involved in everything? Or I was in the drama. I was in the drama club, and we did a number of uh, we did a number of shows, and uh, we're, we did the annual play contest. We did pretty well a couple of years. Yeah, I, I, I yeah I was in the play contest for one year for something. I can't remember what it was. Yeah, at Burn Burton, where I went to high school, we didn't do uh, full productions. It was mostly one acts and, and a scene from a play or something. We didn't do full shows. Did you do the contest? The contest play was always a one act. Yeah. Uh, yeah we but never we did, did we did some we did some full length plays. Yeah. yeah. Well, they have a great group there now. That's for I sure. I was in the last graduating class at Bennington High School. Mm -hmm. The the year oh, after right. I graduated, Mount right. Anthony right began. And you are married to Deborah. I am. And you have one, two, three, four, five, six grandchildren? No, I have five. three. Three. Oh, yes, there's only, okay. Three. All right, three. all right. I was putting uh, some extra ones in there. I, what, something happened when grandchildren came into your life. How did that change your life? There was, I mean, besides being busy and being such a good grandfather, what, what well, was I, it I, I lucked into to grandchildren. My wife has a son and a daughter, and uh, they are my stepchildren. Right. And Jody has two sensational little boys, five and seven, and Chris has a fabulous daughter, uh, Cheyenne, who's 17. And graduating is, uh, this year. Graduated <laughs> from high school <laughs> and uh, has, has been with us most of her life, and she's a, she's a joy. And the boys... Uh, Mason and uh, Tyler are just sensational kids. So we we have a wonderful, wonderful time with grandchildren. And, and Jody, or not Jody, but uh, Cheyenne, um, what did the soccer team do for her this year? Oh. Which was so good. I mean, people might not realize that it's your granddaughter we're talking about Chey here. That Cheyenne has played soccer all four years in high school. And 
This year in one of the games, she broke her foot yeah. and was in a cast. Senior and year. She, each year they have the final home game and, and it's very special and parents go, Deborah and I were on the field and uh, before the game and the ceremony with uh, the other uh, parents with the kids and it was great. And Cheyenne had told her coach that she really wanted to start the last, the, the final yeah. home game. And her coach laughed and said, you can start the cheers on the bench because yeah. she's in a cast and on crutches. Yeah, poor kid. And she said, no, I really, I really want to start. So they figured out a way for, she had on a, a boot right. over the cast. And uh, they, uh, kicked the, the, they kicked the ball down to her at the very beginning of the game so she could kick it. And the deal was she would kick it out of bounds and then the other team would get the ball. And the Mount Anthony coach told, the, it was the Burn Burton coach, right. actually, that that's what they were going to do. And uh, he said, oh, the, well, then we, when we uh, throw the ball in, uh, we'll throw it uh, wrong, incorrectly right, so right. it'll go out of bounds. Right. So then you'll get the ball in the ga and the game will just start Right. Normally, but Cheyenne will get to start, right. and that's what they did. That was so, so nice. Both teams and both coaches uh, were in on it, and it was it was wonderful. That it was, was a great. huge, as you can imagine, it was a huge disappointment for her when she was unable to continue playing this year. Right. But she won the Sportsmanship Award. Good for her. And uh, she was Rookie of the Year in her sophomore year. She's uh, she's a talented uh, she's talented a good girl. She's on her way to MCLA. And uh, quite often you'll see her, or most of the time you'll see her out in the lobby. She, uh, As she's one of Old Castle's. With their tickets. Or they she works their in the box office. box office. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, what about Old Castle? Where and how did that start? Uh, Old Castle was begun in New York uh, with five actors. Four of us had gone to the American Academy of Dramatic Arts. Uh, 1972 was the first year. And we toured out of New York with plays. We'd rehearse them in New York and then tour them the first. Uh, was the Hollow Crown, which we thought would be a really big <laughs> audience grabber. It was about the kings and queens of England, and we traveled throughout New York State and Vermont, and uh, it was not an audience grabber, but we had a great deal of fun with it. It was actually it was put together by Ro uh, John Barton of the Royal Shakespeare Company, and he was wonderful to us. We had no money, and so we asked him if we could do the show without paying him royalties. royalties. And he told us, yes, we could, as long as we didn't tell his agent. So we didn't tell his agent, and we did that show a number of times uh, without having to pay Mr. Barton anything. I feel semi-guilty to this day about that. Yeah, explain to people what royalties are, because that's something you have to, to really work with every show you do. I negotiate with every show. Negotiating, uh, right. Royalties are simply the, the rights paid they're generally on a per performance basis uh, to the playwright. And there are two, sort of three major companies that we deal with. Uh, Samuel French, dr uh, Dramatist Place Service and Dramatic Publishing. Uh, two of them are in New York, the other's in Chicago. And we also deal a lot with agents. Uh, if they're newer works or unpublished works, I've, I've often told this story, the biggest compliment I think that Old Castle's ever gotten is that uh, we wanted to do a Noel Coward play. This is several years ago. And I contacted, you have to contact an agent when you're a professional company mm -hmm. to do a Noel Coward show. And even though Mr. Coward has been gone for many years, right. uh, somebody's still getting that money. Of course. Uh, and I told him we wanted to do this, uh, I think it was uh, Private Lives. And they said, gee, they couldn't give us the rights because it was going to be done that same year uh, on the West End in London. West End is their version that of still happens Broadway. Still happens And I said, you may not realize that we're in Bennington, Vermont. <laughs> and I don't think that our production is going to keep too many people away from the West right. End production. And they said, oh, well, we, but we can't, we, I'm sorry, we're, we're a little worried about that, so we can't give you the rights. And when it closed on the West End, I got a very lovely letter from them telling me that, uh, the show was now available. By, by then, our season was right. well 
into the season and we couldn't we couldn't change it right. but it was a it was a great compliment <laughs> that they thought uh, right. Alan Rickman was in that production we had a great cast oh, God he's so good uh, and it's a wonderful play and we still haven't done it someday still, yeah. someday. <laughs> someday. Yeah, someday someday, someday. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so where did you finally end up what was your first home that you had a home base for a while well we toured out of New York for yeah. a, for a few years uh, we did a couple of shows at the Park McCullough House. Mm -hmm. We did the Hollow Crown there. We did Under Milkwood there, and we did uh, we did Star Spangled Girl by Neil Simon okay. as a fundraiser for the Park McCullough House. And you were in that one. And I was in that, and we did that at what is uh, now Monument School, but then was uh, St. Joseph College. Okay. before it became Southern Vermont College. We rehearsed the show in New York. We came to Bennington on, I th think, a Thursday. We put up the set. We did the play for 500 people on Saturday night. We took the set down, and we went back to New York. For 500 people? For 500 people and one, and one performance. Was that your biggest audience at that point? There. Yeah, uh, that you'd ever had at that point? Uh, oh, at that point, yeah. yes, because we hadn't played before yeah. that. Uh, then they really yeah. squeezed people in to get <laughs> 500 people in there. I don't know how they, how they did it. No. Uh, but, and then we, had, we began looking around for a home, and when we came to Bennington, my parents would beat us. Yeah. So we wound up, we laundry? Wound up here. Laundry? Do your laundry there, too? Uh, yes, yeah, yeah. yes, oh, okay. yes. Of course. Uh, so you've had many homes. We have. We not, were not a lot. Not, not really. I mean, we toured. We, we were then uh, at Southern Vermont College, right. uh, and we did a couple of readings there, and then we did a piece called From Berlin to Oklahoma, which was about the great Broadway musicals of the 40s. Uh, I, I wrote the, a little book, and, and we stole all the songs, and, and that was hugely successful. Uh, we did a number of performances, and they all sold out. And Tom Gee, who was then president of Southern Vermont College, we were sitting. We were in what they called um, the ballroom, which was the the largest room right, in right. the mansion, which was the main building, the only building for Southern Vermont College at the time. And it was right off Tom's office, the presidential office. And after from Berlin to Oklahoma, we were standing in the ballroom one day, and he said, "You know, I think this could become a theater." And I said, gee, a real theater. And I said, gee, I, I don't know how I could do that. And we did it. We put in tiered seating. We paid for it. Uh, the college did the work. Uh, we bought seats. I remember used theater seats for a dollar a piece. Yeah. They sat in my parents' garage while, <laughs> while we were doing the renovations. And the, the garage flooded, and we had to chip the ice off <laughs> the seats, and we put them up. We had 104 seats, and then we had right. a couple of benches in the back. Well, so depending on the size of the people on the benches, we could get <laughs> as many as, I think, 112 people in there. And, <laughs> and we were at Southern Vermont College from 1977 through 1993. And then in 1994, we did our first show at the Bennington Center for the Arts right. when it was first opened. Right. And we were there for 18 years, and now we're downtown uh, on Main Street at 331 Main Street, and right. we love our new space. It's so wonderful. I, I keep running into people who say, what a wonderful space. If people, if you have not been in there, just, I'm sure people, would be, anybody would be glad to give you a tour if somebody is there, just to see what the space is like. And you have movable seating which is amazing because you can change the the uh, it's very flexible the arrangement uh, it, it's wonderful and that of course that idea came up through Bob Howe right Bob, Bob and Rick Bob and Rick designed the seating and worked extremely hard and we wanted a flexible space and I've worked in a lot of flexible spaces in theaters around the country and Theaters love to talk about having a flexible space, and what I always say is if you have 25 work-study students in two weeks, they're flexible. Yeah, yeah. We can move everything with about four people in three or four hours. That's wonderful. And, and change the seating arrangement entirely. Yeah, and uh, so uh, the first show this year, Northern Boulevard, was a musical. 
That was the, that was the show and we opened. That you opened with the new space with Mr. Carlton with Carpenter. Carlton Carpenter wrote it, who was also a, a Bennington name. and a good friend to Great Old friend. Castle, and Dear has done man. quite a few productions and stuff. Um, I also, I hear people say that they feel like they have the same feeling that they did when they were at uh, Southern Vermont College. It's so intimate. I mean, and also because of the, the seats are wonderful, you've got leg room. And you have nobody sitting in front of you. I mean, you got people in front of you, but you the can sight see lines over are very them. good. Absolutely wonderful, and there's no columns or posts. We or really work to make the theater comfortable. It's air conditioned. Uh, uh -huh. it's, it's warm enough in the winter. Uh, it, the seating is uh, is very comfortable. We uh, we got larger, wider than the than the typical theater seat. They're, they're comfortable. I, There's I, more leg room than I feel, in most I feel comfortable seats. in those seats. So they're very, it, it, it's very comfortable. I think the comfort for the audience is extremely important. An audience wants to see, they want to hear, uh, and we have an intimate space, so uh, that's not too much of a problem. We still have not finished, we've not, we're still raising money to do the renovations. Right, right. And we still have not been able to complete our sound system. We still need money for that. We've gotten some money for it. We've We've made some of the purchases, the beginning purchases for the sound system, but we don't yet have the hearing impaired system, mm -hmm. which is very high on our list. We very much need that. We're fully accessible except for that, and uh, that will that will help uh, a, a great deal. And so we're working really hard to to come up with the monies needed for uh, that. You mentioned air conditioning. I mean, the actors love the air conditioning. I know I do because I'm I'm a sweater, and uh, and I know that's hard, but people need to remember, if you're going to the theater, whether it's Old Castle or wherever you're going, take a wrap or take a sweater with you because the actors really, it's, it's so much better, easier on the actors. <laughs> well, in the, summer it, it's, in the summer, it's really necessary. Oh, man. But I've been uh, to a few of your uh, concerts, uh, part of the concert series, and it's very comfortable, I find, uh, during the winter. It I is. Haven't, I haven't found it... Um, uh, it's a it's a very comfortable, uh, warm space. We worked hard on the lobby. Uh, and, and people I people who th th it's the former Knights of Columbus building, right. and uh, a lot of people come in and say, "Gee, I used to roller skate here. I used to bowl here. <laughs> yeah, bowling. I went to dances here. Went to a lot of dinners here. Sure. And uh, it's changed a, a a great deal and continues to change as we continue to work on it. Right, right. Well, it is. It's a wonderful space and. Uh, if you haven't been to a show, you really should go. And I thought, I thought this the uh, series uh, this year the the uh, was just wonderful. I I loved every show. The comedy, Fox of the Fairway, what a God, golly that was a funny. Ken Little is a very good playwright. He's Northern very funny. Boulevard, the music that Carlton did. Uh, he and uh, he had a partner mm -hmm. working on Carlton that. wrote the music and lyrics. Yeah. The, it was so sweet. It's just a sweet, old-fashioned musical. You did um, um, an, uh, a Sherlock Holmes mm -hmm. written by one of the founding members of Old Castle. Who's Paul Is he working? Paul Velzone. Is he working on another one? Is that what I heard you say? Is he working uh, on another Sherlock Holmes? He he's talked about it. I'm not sure if he is actually is or not. I know he has he had an idea uh -huh. uh, that he was going to work on. Uh -huh. Yeah. And now, of course, what is it? We're getting almost into February. I'm sure you're already getting a season together for, I said session before, getting a new season together. We have, we have some of the season. We're going to open, uh, well, it depends on what we call our season. Uh, we're going to do some plays in, uh, in March. Uh, we're going to do Revolutionary Wizard, which is a one-man show that, that Patrick Ellison Shea, who's worked with us for a long time, he plays Ben Franklin. Right. And uh, Melissa Hurst, who's an actress, wonderful actress, uh, wow. who's worked with us many times, does a show that she wrote called Baby Love, which is about her efforts with her husband, first to have a child and then to adopt a child. And their son, Will, is now in college. And his father is very tall, and Will is very tall. And so uh, I, I'm not sure Will still likes to hear yeah. the, the story of... Uh, when he was when he was tiny and they first brought right, him right. home and all, but yeah. it's a very oh, it's a very it's sweet so touching. show. There's I, been adoption. My, my one of my my older brother was adopted, and adoption's been always really I was adopted in our family, yeah. and and it's a great, it's just a wonderful, warm, 
uh, show. And then in April, we're going to do a piece that Tony Morrow and I have been working on for some time that Willie is going to be in. Yes, with Rick Howe and, and Christine uh, Decker. Very excited about that. It, it's called Bennington Goes to War. And so, uh, I'm not sure exactly when it, they were first done, but some of the, some of the uh, interviews were done several years ago. The, the local historical society interviewed uh, men and women who were uh, local vets from World War II and ask them about their experiences and we have taken their I call it testimony uh, it's all in their words what what they did before the war and during, during the, the war. war and we have and at the same time in Bennington the Bennington Banner ran a series of columns by a man named Leonard Morrison he was a local attorney he had owned the Bennington bookshop at one point and had worked at the Banner before he became an attorney, and then was in in uh, uh, politics. He was um, he was in the state legislature, and he was also uh, in uh, a governor's cabinet. And he wrote a piece uh, every week about what was going on in Bennington at the time, and people would clip it out and send it to soldiers in Europe or wonderful thing. or in the Asian uh, theater. And he also wrote about what was happening to people who were in the service. Uh, and so it, 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 was, it was the way for Benintonians to keep up with both those right. in the service and for those in the service, for those at home. And when I say Benintonians, North Bennington, Poundville, Shaftesbury. Right, the whole uh, area. Woodford, right. the, the, the entire community. Right. And so Leonard Morrison is a character, you play Leonard actually, yeah. he's a character in the play, and Ginger Howe, who was the very long time uh, publisher and managing editor of The Banner, is, uh, is one of the uh, characters in the show. Uh, Ginger Howe had an interesting uh, life. He was, among other things, Lieutenant Governor of Vermont, ran for governor, and as I said, ran and owned The Bennington Banner for a long time. And it's a show that we've been working on for, uh, I think, close to a year now. Tony uh, brought the idea to me, and uh, I, th I think it's going to be, for, for local people who had people in the service, I think it will be uh, very interesting and, and uh, it's very heartwarming. Moving. Yeah. It's a very moving it really piece. Is. And, it's, and we've talked about perhaps doing the same thing with, uh, with Korean uh, vets with uh, Vietnam vets uh, and, and it's led us to another idea that I'm really excited about that we're now trying to put together uh, we we have a number of classes at the at the theater uh, there's an acting class going on right now that Chris Decker Christine Decker and you got a good teaching. turnout for that too we've got a good, good all different ages that. I mm -hmm. think it was wonderful and we've had we had a playwriting class in the fall and we wanted to do another playwriting class so we're, we're trying to put together a playwriting class for Iraq and Afghanistan veterans. Mm. Uh, when they come back from those wars, several of them uh, served several tours. Yeah. Uh, they have lots of stories. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. we're going to try to give them uh, an outlet, a way to tell some of those, some of those stories. Right. So anyway, that will be in... And going back to Bennington Goes to War too. also, uh, Margaret Lilly. Is, is, is one of the is people, it, one in of the the people that is mentioned. If anyone from Pownall or Bennington or the surrounding areas know Margaret, she was a lawyer. Uh, she was involved in World War II, and she is a character in this play. And you were talking about Tony. Tony also, this book about Castleton State College called Big Heart, he, uh, he did the era of the 60s. And uh, different, different people wrote about the different uh, decades of uh, Castleton State College. And he had interviewed me a couple years ago, and I thought, I don't know why he's interviewing me, and blah, blah. And then You were I, a student there. Yeah, that's why. I was a student, and, and I, all of a sudden, I get this book from Tony, and I get a little mention. I got, I got a couple of paragraphs in that book, so I was really shocked. But it's couple a of years really ago, interesting book. A couple of years ago now, uh, Tony wrote a book about Phil Hoff, who was the first uh, Democratic governor of Vermont. Mm -hmm. And he was, he was considered uh, Vermont's JFK, kind mm -hmm. of very good-looking, dashing. Mm -hmm. yep. uh, I think the first three-term 
governor, changed the state in, in numerous ways, and a really interesting book that Tony wrote about him. Tony has a, uh, grew up in Rutland, uh, worked for the Rutland Herald, uh, had a long journalism career in New York, ran Newsday, was managing editor of Newsday, uh, which is a big, uh, the big Long Island paper. Uh, and it's been wonderful working with him. Yeah. And it's, a, it's sure. been a great project. We've really, we've really enjoyed working on that. Uh, but you're not letting the uh, new space uh, go dark all year long because you've been having these, this wonderful concert series going on. I know you've got a couple of shows coming up, plays, but um, I've already, let's see, I went to see I Love a Cello, and uh, I can't remember the title, the name of the man. Oh, I can't remember. Who Jesse the Levy. Jesse Levy. And, and Lincoln then Lincoln Mayorga Mayorga was, the, the, was the pianist. And Lindsay Diet did a, um, a concert. It's a wonderful soprano. And, uh, and an um, actress who's worked with us. Right. And you've had Eric Despard there just Eric last Despard week, Quartet, I Eric Despard Quartet, a jazz quartet. Right. And coming up, we have Evita Kobo, who is uh, uh, it's going to sing jazz in the Great American Songbook. She's wonderful. Let me give you a quote. This is from James Gavin, who's a well-known uh, pop music critic. Yeah. Evita is a find. Her voice is a breeze to listen to, warm, sweet, relaxed, gently swinging, and always connected to the words. Uh, I, there was a, you know Margaret Whiting, the singer? Oh, gosh, yes. Uh, Moonlight in Vermont. Oh, her, fa her father she, wrote Margaret, Moonlight in Vermont. Well, well, and she Margaret Whiting was what, involved or married to that porn star, right? Yeah, she's Jack Wrangler yeah, or somebody. She's married yeah. a few times. Yeah, I think yeah. that was the last Yeah, marriage. she's quite a yeah. dame. <laughs> she was. was a wonderful singer. And uh, it was once <laughs> said about her that uh, Margaret Whiting sings as if she knows more than just the lyrics. And I always, <laughs> uh, which I like a lot. That's interesting. And I always think about Evita Kobo yeah. uh, with that because no, she, she certainly does. She is. She's wonderful. I went to a concert uh, that she did, I think, at St. Peter's. And, uh, oh, she just had everybody mesmerized. She's I mean, going it's to, just. It's going to be the Evita Kobo Quartet. She has three wonderful musicians from Boston her. coming. And that will be February 1st. Uh, at 7:30, um, and uh, it'll be a it'll be a wonderful concert. She's very very talented. And the the ticket prices for all these concerts very reasonable. Twenty dollars. Twenty dollars, and uh, and then Vermont Vaudeville is coming up right. On February eighth, <laughs> Vermont Vaudeville, which is uh, their mission is to revive the spirit of vaudeville in the Green Mountain State by producing and performing funny, amazing, broadly accessible shows. You could go on the web and uh, Google Vermont Vaudeville and see some of what they, they juggle. They do uh, outrageous comedy. There's music. It's a great show to bring children. All the other concerts are at 7.30. This one is it's on a Saturday night, February 8th, but it's at 7 o'clock, so you can bring the little ones. And I'm really looking forward to my grandson seeing Oh, this. I'm sure. Well, it, it's like I remember Ed Sullivan. You know, yes. there's nothing yes. like that on TV yes. anymore. Yes, no, there's not. You know, I mean, I, Ellen DeGeneres tried to do a variety show, which flopped. Oh, she did. TNT, Rosie O'Donnell, she did one. It didn't, that didn't work out either. And I was always sad because I, I loved those variety shows, Sonny and Cher, Ed Sullivan, even Donnie and Marie. I mean, there was, and Perry Como. Oh, Perry Como. He was so great. But uh, I think that, no, I'm really looking forward to that. But then <laughs> there was a concert at Vermont Arts Exchange. Uh, was that last year that caused quite a stir? Ellen Verrick, my friend Ellen Verrick, went to see it. And wow, she, it opened her eyes. <laughs> this, is our, this is our first uh, collaboration with the Vermont Arts Exchange. <laughs> and we're planning to have some, they do a wonderful uh, music series. Uh, the Basement Music Series yeah. at the VAE in North Bennington and they wanted uh, a little more space both in terms of the stage and for audience and so they are bringing the Gypsy Lane Cabaret and Company to uh, the Old Castle Theater la la. and uh, that's going to be on the 15th and we're really looking forward to that. I they, would suggest that if people, are, I would suggest that people start getting tickets early calling uh, calling Old Castle at 447-0564 and get uh, ticket. I mean, other shows too, but this show, I understand, is absolutely outrageous and so much fun and it's really going to be quite an evening. They I think. don't use the word burlesque, but I think it's a word that <laughs> suits much of what 
from much what as I've what heard, they do. From what I heard, it sounds like should, burlesque. So uh, that should be a lot of fun. I'm really a, looking forward to that. because It's I miss a very it. good show to leave the kids home for. I, yeah, I, yeah. bring yeah. them to Vermont Vaudeville the week before. Bring them to Vermont yeah. Vaudeville. Yeah. Uh, and then on the 16th uh, of February, uh, Sunday, the day after. Uh, oh, right after. All right. Right after uh, Gypsy Lane is uh, uh, the second of three L'Ensemble concerts, L'Ensemble's in residence uh, this year at the theater. And they have uh, a wonderful violinist, Dale Stuckenbrook, who is going to be there with, uh, and I may be pronouncing this incorrectly, and I apologize if I do, but Hiwan Kim will be the pianist. And they have just extraordinary credits. Uh, and we, it'll be, the, as I said, the second of the L'Ensemble concerts. Uh, and Ida Fiella, who is the artistic director of L'Ensemble, is able to get world-class musicians and bring them to Bennington. And it's really extraordinary uh, the, the ties that she has oh, with, yeah. with the international music scene. And one of the things we're really looking forward to is Dale not only plays the violin, and like most great violinists, he owns a very good, very expensive violin. He also plays the saw. She loves the saw. And, and we'll play it during the concert. And the afternoon of the concert, we uh, are going to have a demonstration of Dale playing the saw at Greenberg's. <laughs> He, and he will play I one of the it. saws that they have for sale, <laughs> <laughs> which is the way every classical music that. concert should be introduced. I oh, think. that's wonderful! So that's going to be a, that's going to be a great. Can deal you just for very briefly, uh, what is L'Ensemble? I mean, she is the artistic director, but what exactly? I mean, L'Ensemble it used to was, have a home, and it was a you know, it was really a well. They had a number popular. of homes. They were in they were in Cambridge uh, for many years. Right. Uh, my wife Deborah actually worked for them. She was the company manager uh -huh. for L'Ensemble. Uh, and and learned a, a, a great deal uh, in that in that job, which led to several other not-for-profit executive director kind of jobs that she's had. Uh, L'Ensemble is a chamber music organization. Uh, they were in residence at the Egg in Albany uh -huh. for yeah, many well, years. Yeah, that's right. And they their one of the things I like about them is that their concept of chamber music is considerably more broad than most. Uh, definitions of chamber music in, uh, I'm trying to look at the date here, in March 21st, Ida Fiella is going to uh, headline the third L'Ensemble concert, and it's called I Love a Piano, and she will have all the musicians who are working on the first two concerts with her, Jesse Levy, uh, Lincoln Mayorga, uh, Dale ah. Stuckenbrook, uh, we'll all be back, and she will sing uh, the Great American Songbook, uh, Irving Berlin and Rodgers and Hart, and uh, you know the great um, classic American yeah. pop songs. Right. And so their version, uh, and she's a, a wonderful uh, soprano uh, who sings opera and and can and sing she's, Stephen Sondheim. She's what you'd call a dame. And she is. She is a she fiery is. redhead, a dame. And she so that's is sort of their else. definition of, of, of chamber music, which yeah, is I was at a quite concert that nice. Katie Beck was at, and Ida and I sat together, and she told me about this program that she was going to be doing. And she said, do you know I love a piano? I said, I love a piano. Oh, my God, of course I. It's my favorite Irving Berlin song. And she said, you know, a lot of people don't know it. And I remember I introduced that song to Lucille Crosscup. Um, really? I told her about it, and she had never heard of it. Really? And the next year, when the choruses all got together for the show, she did I Love a Piano, uh, because I had told her about it, and she, she heard about the That's song. That's a great and, song. And, oh, it's a wonderful it's a song. Great song. Michael Feinstein does a great version of that, he does. too. Now, but isn't there something before Ida, though? Um, Is that the, um, the 26th? The 28th, you had the Gold Magnolias. Now, I don't, I've never heard of the Gold well, Magnolias. Uh, we're not sure. Oh, you're we're, not we're sure. Gonna, we're, we're going to have the Gold Magnolias at another time. Uh, ten minutes before I came to the studio oh, okay. for this interview, we got a call, and they have a new manager who has double booked them. Oh, geez. So they're asking if they can uh, change their concert date. And uh, okay. I'm, I'm expecting we'll be able to do that, but what they because we're really looking forward to them. They are a great, 
great group. Um, they're hot, funky tunes with some old school R&B and funk along with some stage shtick and showmanship. Uh, Sounds and, like fun. And we have, we have become real. Amanda Garcia, who has worked very hard putting this concert series together and, and uh, wears a number of hats at Old Castle, uh, has, was crestfallen when we got the word about the double booking because she's become a huge fan of the oh, Magnolias. Really? They're very good. So Amanda, at some point, at some point we'll Amanda we'll Garcia have them. was a student of yours at, in, at in the, the theater arts class at CDC. At, the, at CDC, and um, um, I don't believe when she got involved with Cat TV or sorry with uh, Old Castle that she thought she would be wearing so many hats. Did she? I mean, she's been like a godsend to you, I think, at this moment. Uh, she works uh, very hard putting the concert series together. Yep. She, uh, one of her titles is company manager. She's acting now with the Old Castle Actors Express, which is touring elementary schools. And you, I went to see that show. That was uh, really delightful. And uh, we, uh, I think we're about three quarters of the way through the, the elementary school tour. We've played um, several of the elementary schools in in the area with that show after having done it at the theater for a while we're now working on the next uh putting together the next uh actors express show and it's a non -equ it's our second company it's a non-equity company and actually uh we're looking for men for our next show so we're looking for non-equity actors if you're interested in auditioning for the actors express please give us a call and there is another term Non-equity, equity. When you say you're looking for non-equity, what? Tell people exactly what equity, equity is. Equity is the stage actors union for for actors and stage managers, and we sign a contract with the actors union every year, and it means that in, in our particular contract, that what they call the first five actors in any production have to be equity. Uh, when we do a larger production, we're going to do two large productions this year. Uh, we'll have some non-equity productions and non-equity actors in those, but the first five means if it's a cast of one or two or three or four or five, everyone in the cast has to be equity. So most of our shows, most of the, the, the but almost everyone in the cast is is equity. You're now an equity actor. And a number of actors, uh, most of our actors come from New York. We audition in New York. We go to Actors Equity every year and uh, spend, we have, uh, under contract, we have to have an open audition in New York, and so I sit for eight hours, and every two minutes see another actor. I think last year I saw 165 actors mm. in eight hours. It's a little mind-numbing. Right. After uh, after about the 144th, I find it's yeah. it really yeah, I'm tough sure. to remember who was the who was the 32nd actor who who came by. Uh, but it's the mark of professionalism. We deal with a number of unions. I'm a member of I'm a member of three 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 theatrical unions: actors, equity, directors, uh, stage directors, oh, stage. and uh, also the drama st dramatist guild for playwrights. Now I have to say I am looking forward to the Vermont Arts Exchange concert, but I think even more I'm looking forward to March seventh through the 9th. Well, that's also. Oh no. Yes, that's been that's been postponed. So let's not talk about that. Oh, we'll, that's no. going to be probably in the fall. Oh, in the fall. But yes. can I just mention her? Mary? Sure. No. Sure. Cheryl Cheryl um, uh, Cheryl Howard. Uh, Cheryl Howard was in the cabaret this past year. She was in she, Northern Boulevard. And she was in Northern Boulevard. She played three, four different characters. This woman is so talented and has the most unbelievable voice I mean she brought some of us to our feet and that song that she sang for my Eda so when she can come back to Old Castle you should definitely see her in this show she's it's about Josephine Baker it's a show she wrote oh. uh, and it's about the great Josephine Baker and she's beautiful she's a gorgeous woman it's just uh, she's so talented Old Castle is so lucky you, you get so many talented actors that come up from New York and sometimes I think, why aren't these people, why haven't they become we have more? Had, well, you know, we've and had, some people have. We've I mean, had we, Oscar winners. Yes, you have. Tony winners. You have. Emmy winners. Grammy winners work with us. And yet some of these They're people on television that work are so good, you think, why don't they have a better 
chance or a, a, you know a, why aren't they stars because some of the people that come through those doors are so talented they are indeed and and uh, I, I I've said before when I started acting with Old Castle I mean I thought oh god these people coming up from New York I thought at first I, oh I'm so jealous of them blah, blah, blah. but then after talking to some of them they said no we're jealous of you <laughs> you get to work you get to do a few shows a year or whatever you want to do. We have other jobs and you know we have to go pounding door to door to get those jobs. So it's it's not an easy profession acting and I'm no, very glad that it's I uh, I knew that it was not something I could uh, I could do for well I still I still when I <laughs> people say you're a professional I still laugh. I mean, it just and I got the I've got my equity card and everything to prove it. Actually, the equity cards are much better now. They are. They're much nicer. They're that, much nicer. The, the anniversary world, equity they're, card. They're I got the one after the anniversary card now. Cause and I got my 25-year pin. I don't know if it's a 25-year yeah, pin or pin. I guess that's what it meant. Yeah, yeah very, it's very, very, very fancy. classy. And let's see. Now, you mentioned uh, that uh, Patrick is going to be doing uh, Revolutionary a Wizard. Uh, we got that. That's um, the show about Ben Franklin. March 13th through the 15th. Mm -hmm. And then this baby love show. Melissa really, I don't know, that was such, such heartwarming, touching, uh, and, and Melissa has worked with Old Castle quite, quite often now. She was, last year she was in the Strange Disappearance of Bees, she was in The Grass is Greener, she was in Picnic, uh, she was in I'm Not Rappaport, she's done a number of shows yeah, for us. I, yeah, I'm I was leaving, involved. I'm leaving some out. Yeah, I was involved in, um, no, I've never done anything with Melissa. I would love to work with Melissa sometime. She was in on Golden Pond. And can we also talk about Christine Decker? You said that she's uh, teaching an acting class she's now. She's teaching an acting class. She's got many different ages in the in this class. She, yeah, I think, I think it's high school to nearly 80 or that's somewhere That's what in the I 80s. heard. And yeah. she's just an amazing, high school, I guess. amazing actress. Her uh, portrayal of Grandma Moses this past season, along with uh, uh, Peter Langstaff. Peter Langstaff. Uh, was <clears throat> so good. It was just incredible. She, she's just an amazing actress. And and you came across her a long time ago, long time before I became involved. She's worked with us since '73. Yeah, yeah, long time. She's been with us longer than Rick Howe, believe yeah, it or not. Yeah, that's I mean, hard. To she believe. had long, Rick. Rick has been with us all full-time since 1975 right. and is an artistic, uh, our associate artistic director and an actor and a uh, set designer and he does our graphics, et cetera, et cetera. He wears you'd be lost without tons and tons of hats. He and his uh, dad. But uh, Christine did her first show in 73 with us. Yeah. She worked for a long time. She was uh, in the improv unit at Disney. Um, she worked in Minnesota for a long time and has always come back, uh, but she's been back now full-time in the area for the last couple of years and working with us a lot. Her portrayal in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf that. was, and Rick's set for Virginia Woolf. Oh man, what a set that was. Yeah, no, she, I, you know, she's so much fun to work with too. She is. Really fun she to work is. with. And you mentioned Paul Falzone before and Gary Poe. We didn't mention Gary. He Gary was and I are working on a show now. We're putting together uh, what will be a touring production of Romeo and Juliet. Oh. So we're looking forward to that. Interesting. Oh, wow. And we'll do it at the theater, I think. Is that still playing in New York? With Orlando Blue? No, it no? closed. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. geez. It's been a great year for Shakespeare in New York. Uh, yeah. But that show did not get it's great the British, reviews. British shows are doing okay. Yes. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to, I, I hope I can get down to New York. Evidently, sometime during the spring, um, Alan Cumming and Michelle Williams are supposed to be doing cabaret. Yes. And then P Neil Patrick Harris, Hedwig and the Angry Inch. And I... Oh They've already God. extended that and it hasn't opened yet. I can't, well, yeah, Neil Patrick Harris. I mean, yeah. he's a, he can do he anything. Should do, he should do a TV variety show. He can do anything, yeah. He should, you're he right. Should. He's the one that should do that. Um, you want to hear what starts our season? Ooh, our theater ooh, season? Can we get a little sneak peek sure. at that? Sure. Oh, uh, I'm we're going to open May 9th yeah. with uh, Tally's Folly, which is a show we did many years ago. It's oh. a Pulitzer Prize winner. Uh -huh. um, beautiful, uh, beautiful play. It's Lanford Wilson. It's part of a trilogy that he wrote. Fifth of July is uh -huh. one. 
uh, another in that series. I, I love it. And, and it, is a, it is a joint production with the Bickford Theater. We've been working with the Bickford Theater now for four or five years. This will be our fourth. We missed a year when we were homeless. Uh, this year you this did Sherlock Holmes down We there. did, yeah, our, our production of, of uh, Sherlock Holmes, A Night's Gambit went to the Bickford. Right. Uh, and this will start at the Bickford and then oh, come wonderful. to Bennington. Oh, wonderful. Um, something and then we have a couple of open slots oh, okay. Okay. that we're working on. There's a possible uh, co-production co that we're working on, talking about with another theater. And uh, then we're going to do in the summer, in August, uh, Frank Latson, who worked with us for many years, oh, God, is coming back to direct My Fair Lady. And in October, uh, we're going to do Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. As oh. With uh, Jenny Strasberg and Lauren Dunn and Paul Romero and Richard Howe and others. God, My Fair Lady. Oh, Frank, I miss Frank. I, God, he hasn't been around in years. Or maybe he's been around and I just haven't seen him listen, when he's been Listen, Listen, Texas now, and uh, we'll be coming back to... My Fair Lady, boy, there's a production. We're going, to do, we're going to do a somewhat pared down version. Uh, uh, but it's a great, it's, it, I think it's the, the best musical book ever written. Uh -huh. Alan J. Lerner just wrote a brilliant book and the songs are glorious to say the least. Has Old Castle ever done Pygmalion, which My no. Fair Lady was based on? Have, no. you, have you done Shaw? Have you done any George Bernard Shaw? Uh, we did Candida. Okay, that was and a while. we did that was uh, we did me. we did the Devil's Disciple that you were in. Oh yeah, we did the Devil's Disciple. We did yes. that was in uh, conjunction with. It was uh, a co-production with Bennington a College. A co-production with the Bennington College. That was an interesting experience. Very interesting experience. Actually, so, we, so that's um, I think those those are the two Shaw plays that we. Actually, did. I wasn't really supposed to be in the my my character. You wrote a lot of extra. Exposition or whatever. Well, Shaw, Shaw always wrote great stage directions and is known for that. And we uh, we got into rehearsal, and I realized <laughs> it's a five act play, and I was astonished to find out it's not very long. <laughs> and so I decided that we would do it without an intermission, but we needed some transitions from act to act and right. scene to scene a couple of times. We actually did it in less than ninety minutes. And Willie uh, played a character, played a couple of characters, but one of the characters, yeah, well, one uh, we took some of the stage directions and used it as transitions, and so you became a sort of narrator. Uh, yeah, and try to make stage directions interesting. And you did. <laughs> I well, that, I tried. We did a similar thing with uh, 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 <laughs> of Mice and Men, and then we had Nick Plakius, who played Sherlock Holmes for us this year, yeah. uh, and is a great uh, singer, songwriter, guitarist. And we had him do songs uh, as transitions yeah. between scenes. Uh -huh. And we did Mice and Men without an intermission. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of intermissions. And I think, yeah, I know you're not. I think that audiences are, are not now, which is partly why we now have so many plays that are being written in one act and run for an hour 20 or an hour 30 Do you minutes. find that difficult to find a three-act play and find the, the right place to, to cut it? I yes, mean, because you I can't made, always do the first two acts and then just the third act, because usually the third act is shorter. I made usually. a terrible mistake once and didn't realize it till opening night. We did The Odd Couple, which you were in. That, okay. And that that's, a, that's a three-act play. Yeah. And we did it in two acts. Right. And I did, the, did act one and act two, scene one, without... An intermission and so we just had a scene break between the two and between those two acts in Mr. Simon's play in the way he wanted it done right. uh, the apartment you all know everybody knows the odd couple story right Oscar oh, yeah. and Felix Oscar and, and Felix Oscar's the, the slob, the slob and, the and Felix one. picks yeah. up and Felix comes to live with him and so between act one and act two the apartment is uh, transformed uh, because Felix has come in and, and, and made it a much nicer place to live. And we didn't do anything, but we, we had 
clothes all over and it was just messy. And you're supposed to change curtains and, and sofas and all kinds right, of right. stuff. And I thought, well, we'll be able to do this without an intermission here if we just pick it up. Right. And we did that opening night. And uh, it wasn't until opening night when in front of an audience that I realized, ah, it's not enough. It's just not enough. Right. You need that moment where the lights come up or the curtain opens and the audience realizes Felix has transformed right. this apartment. And in our version, Felix tidied. Yeah, right. <laughs> and it, right. Wasn't, it wasn't enough. So I've tried to be more careful since then in if we eliminate an intermission about where we eliminate. It's also fascinating to me, one of the things that an audience changes it so much and just suddenly the people sitting there, because we'd done the same thing in rehearsal a number of times and it hadn't ever dawned on me how much was missing when we did that. But opening night with people sitting there, it was, oh, yeah. that's just not enough. It was a good production yeah. and we, we enjoyed it. It remains a very funny Yeah, it would be interesting. Play. Uh, you were in it. Dogs. Paul Falzone was in it. Rick was in it. Right. A uh, uh, number of Bill Tatum. regular. Tatum was Tatum? in it. Bob, yeah, Bill Tatum played, was in it. He played Felix. He was, he was Felix, yeah. yeah. No. yeah was very now, that, that was a fun production. Um, we um, are coming close to the end of our uh, hour here with Eric. Time and, just uh, flies, doesn't it? It does fly, really? you know, and we didn't know whether, uh, you know, what would happen here. But I do want to thank you for coming in and talking about the concert series. We will make sure that we do some PSAs so that you will know that these different shows that are coming up. Uh, also, uh, how about your website and Facebook? If you, uh, Facebook or whatever, if you give you like, that really quickly. If you like quickly. us on Facebook, uh, you can Google us and find our webpage, uh, uh, www.oldcastletheater.org, and there's lots of information there, and we'll be more as we get closer is and closer to the season. Is the concert series and the dates, are, is that on there too, so uh, that people will get Some of them are. Together? Okay. And if you have any questions, you can always call us at 802-447-0564. Right. Okay, and as we get ready to leave here today, I thank everybody for joining me for the first show of Your Friends and Neighbors, and I want to leave you with this uh, little quote from Ralph Waldo Emerson. The only way to have a friend is to be one. And Eric has been a friend to me. I hope he feels that I have been a friend you to him. You certainly have, Will. And I thank you so much for being here today, being my first guest. And uh, I think we can probably wrap it up about now. I, I'm thinking that's what we can do anyways. So again, thank you. And until next time, I'll be back with another Your Friends and Neighbors. One, two, three. <laughs> This time of day, everything's okay. I take a long look around, I have to say. This time of year, it becomes clear. Though you hold dear, you draw them near. This time of day, everything's okay.